what I will do is just talk a tiny bit more about the legislative definitions we have in the state and talk about that um, fiance, the ethos definition that we're recommending the state adopt. Now, the scope of the report and its, its aims would highlight the causes and impacts of both homelessness and hidden homelessness in the Trapper community. As uh, both Bridget and Senator Flynn have said, he used data that was collected in the spring summer of 2018 with the assistance of Dr. Alistair Christie in the Applied Social Studies Department in UCC. Now, the aims of the report were obviously providing an overview of the current structures and systemic barriers, obviously, which have both responsibility for creating travel accommodation provision within the state, but also in hampering provision of traveler specific accommodation. Uh, Just to note that throughout, I'll be using the term accommodation instead of housing in recognition of the fact, like Senator Flynn said, that housing doesn't equate to accommodation or, or the ideal accommodation for many travelers for some That might be group housing, that might be halting sites, that might be trailers and mobiles. Now, another core aim then was to explore the causes of the generalised traveller accommodation crisis. It analyses the way that this crisis, this general housing crisis, but particularly that experienced by the traveller community, has created worryingly high levels of homelessness, both nationally and particularly in the region. And it makes a number of recommendations of changes that need to be made to our policies around homelessness and accommodation to address this. And importantly, there is a real lack of data to support informed policy changes. And this is just another layer to add to that. So even though it's regional, it has national application. But generally, a huge issue with traveller accommodation and lack of traveller accommodation is insufficient traveller accommodation provisions. This has resulted in overcrowding. A lot of sites that were built, particularly ones in Cork City and County and Kerry, were initially built for a certain set number of families and then never expanded to reflect the way which the traveller community lives in family units. So this has resulted in overcrowding. Despite, obviously, a basis for transient sites being provided within the legislation, to date there are no transient sites provided in the region, despite there being a need for them and a request for them. And this all speaks to those general systemic failings, that implementation gap that we speak about in the report between the Housing Travel Accommodation Act of 1998 and the lived reality of many travellers in Ireland today. This is then compounded by the fact that many travellers who are not able to source accommodation through the appropriate channels are then also unable to find accommodation within the private rented market owing to generalised discrimination. 85% of landlords who were surveyed said they wouldn't rent to a traveller and there's case studies included in the report which speak to the implications of that upon the community. Now when we talk about this idea of homeless and then the competing term hidden homeless. It's important to look at the state definition of homelessness. Now, Ireland is actually recognised internationally as a state which does have a definition of homelessness in its legislation. Many European states actually do not. Even though we do have that legislative definition, it is incredibly narrow. It fails to basically recognise many of the ways in which people are effectively homelessness in or homeless in the state today. So the relevant legislative provision is Section 2 of the Housing Act of 1988, and a person is considered homeless if there is no accommodation available, which in the opinion of the authority they can reasonably occupy or remain in occupation of. So then when we talk about hidden homelessness, we're talking about those excluded from those traditional definitions of homelessness, and by way of that, that thus excluded from the state homeless supports. And now, Senator Flynn mentioned the ethos definition. It's considered to be the best practice uh, definition of homelessness in that it includes most situations in which someone could become homeless. It was designed to respond to the different variances across the European member states. It was proposed by Fiance, who are a European Housing and Homelessness Federation. So it's really rooted in lived experience and this idea of best practice. So it identifies four main categories of living situation. So obviously this goes much further than the Irish definition. So it includes rooflessness. So obviously that would be our traditional idea of homelessness, um, those in relying on homeless shelters. So people sleeping rough on the street. Then we have houselessness, so people with a place to sleep, but maybe this is their reliant upon shelter. We have those living in insecure housing, which unfortunately reflects the experience of many of those in the rented market at present. So those threatened with severe exclusion due to insecure tenancies, those without leases, those obviously at risk of eviction, and those in untenable housing environments, such as those exposed to domestic violence. We then have those living in inadequate housing. So caravans on, it says they're illegal campsites. What we mean by those is those forced to basically reside on the side of the road, those forced to pull up because there is no provision in their area, 
those doubling up, those in overcrowded or just unstable, unfit housing. So a lot of travellers in Cork and Kerry experiencing hidden homelessness would fall under that heading. Now, when we talk about this shift in definition, this isn't just a shift in defining hidden homelessness. This would also shift housing supports. So instead of the current legislative definition would only really provide housing or homelessness supports to possibly the first two people there, those experiencing ruthlessness and houselessness. If we expanded the legislative definition to include this broader definition, it would protect all of those on the list. So it would recognise the extent of homelessness created by the current housing crisis in Ireland. Now what this shift in definition does is it not only broadens possible scope of protection and policy but it also means that the official figures that we have in the state are greatly skewed. Now these figures and indeed all traveller accommodation data is skewed because many travellers do not want to identify themselves to the local authorities to those doing travel accounts so we do have to take most of these with a pinch of salt and actually accept that they're probably underestimations that the problem is probably much much more severe than we know. Um, In terms of the report, the data set that we used that was informed obviously by questionnaires sent around in spring, summer 2018 and compiled by the Applied Social Studies Department of UCC, surveyed 397 traveller family units. They were asked about their current accommodation, among other factors. 22% of those, or 88 individuals, met the criteria under the current legislation of being homeless. However, when we applied the ethos definition, so when we went back and we saw those who were doubling up, pulled up in neighbours or in family members' yards who were couch surfing, who were sleeping in cars, that actually expanded to 85.6%, which off the top of my head, I think was about 330, 340 out of 397, which is shocking. So of those 397 traveller family units surveyed in the Southwest, 85.6% of those qualified as homeless under the ethos definition. And this really speaks to the depth of the issue and the depth of this insufficient accommodation policy for travellers in the region and nationally. And this is a massive cause of concern for the Regional Traveller Accommodation Working Group. So the key findings from this report, just to summarise, obviously, were to consider the causes of traveller homelessness. And it goes into these in depth. It speaks to the role of local authorities and the gaps in the state's traveller accommodation provision what we call the implementation gap between the current Legislative Act, the Traveller Housing Accommodation Act of 1998, and the lived reality of travellers and their inability to secure culturally appropriate accommodation. It also speaks to issues with this, including where the local authorities have evicted travellers into homelessness, and it uses a number of case studies. I've talked about doubling up. Some of the examples were of young couples who were doubling up, staying in a trailer in their parents' driveway in their yards, who were evicted without being provided with an alternative source of accommodation. So we're then sleeping in cars. It speaks to this idea of the fact that hidden homelessness is a growing problem. As I said, we we do not know the full extent of this. We only know those who have identified themselves. It speaks to those barriers to private rented accommodation that I mentioned. It outlines the limited scope of the current legislative definitions for overcrowding and homelessness. And it speaks to that limitation of current homelessness policy to respond adequately to the needs of travellers experiencing homelessness. So in particular, those put into emergency accommodation that might be in B&Bs, often family units are separated. So in the case of a family, the husband, the father is sent to one accommodation site and the mother and the children are sent to another. And the implications that has upon a family unit going through a difficult time anyway, but then being separated. So it makes, it, it, it looks at the limitations of this and particularly how this affects the unique community bonds and family bonds of the traveller community. So the core recommendations proposed by the Regional Traveller Accommodation Working Group of Cork and Kerry were to update our definition of homelessness. So to bring in that ethos light definition to cover of the broader scope, but also to recognise the lived experiences of those experiencing homelessness and how these fall outside that traditional sleeping rough idea. Um, that very dated idea of homelessness, which fails to recognise the issue within the state. It also speaks to a need to update the current statutory definition of overcrowding. Again, this does not fit with modern standards. It doesn't include children under 10. So you could see theoretically a case where you might have a number of of travellers residing in a two-room chalet. I think there was a case in Killarney, and someone can correct me on that. But it was considered not to be overcrowded by the judge because all the children were under 10. Another recommendation then is on increasing our consideration of hidden homelessness and how that specifically impacts upon the traveller community and how this is an obstacle that isn't, there's a lack of visibility here. There's a need for specific traveller support 
reports and responses to traveller homelessness. Obviously, that would differ from those needed for the general population. It responds to local authorities evicting travellers into homelessness. This shouldn't happen but it does, and it makes recommendations on how that should be addressed. It also recognises the need for a right to housing to be inserted into the constitution. Again, this would provide a better statutory legislative legal protection for those experiencing homelessness and hidden homelessness and needs to happen. And finally, it recommends repeal of Section 24 of the Housing Act of 2002, which criminalises nomadism. And essentially, since that act came into to place, it's seen a stop to travelling, which is a core facet for many travellers of their identity and historically the community.